you want to find out how to paint this Bobrass Classic and a lovely waterfall, then sit tight. This is the painting for you. Let's rewind the clock. Hi, welcome back to the studio. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I did sort of something a little bit more informal in the way of a video for you. And I, I painted this little nebula painting and you can hang that on the wall, whichever way you like, of course. And it was a lot of fun just to sort of talk and, and paint and just share some time with you guys. So I thought it was such an enjoyable experience for me that I thought I'm going to do another one for you. I'm going to do a little Bob Ross painting for you. So I thought, let's have a go at another Bob Ross classic here, which is, um, Kaiki, what's it called? It's an oval painting. It's Enchanted Oval. It's a sepia tone painting. So he did, he did several sepia tone paintings. They all look kind of similar. So I, I jumble up the names in my head, but it doesn't matter. But I'm going to do it today as um, an oblong painting. So not an oval, but an oblong. It gives me a little more real estate, a bit more kind of scale to work with and to film, of course. And I'm going to sort of film this as again, sort of straight from the hip. You might hear wind chimes clattering in the background and the odd car going by. Heck, it's just life in the studio. But I'm going to try and paint this for you in a reasonably nice pace, as though I were doing it for you for an art demonstration. So if anything gets too long and repetitive, I might just crop that out. But otherwise, it's just going to be me painting and explaining and showing you stuff that I think would help you. Now, one of the key things I'm going to do to this painting, I'm going to change it a little bit, the colour scheme. I want to introduce a little bit more of an autumnal feel to this because um, you'll see in just a moment, I'm going to do a little tiny field trip for you. It's the quickest field trip in history. I go out the door, turn right and walk into the garden and that's the field trip. But it's just to see my lovely maple tree just changing colour. We'll do that in just a moment. So let's get the canvas prepped and ready to go because this is just a dry black gesso canvas, but you could just use acrylic and I taped a little border on there. So I'll get this prepped and we can get started. Okay, so I've prepped my canvas. So what I did is I, I took some of this and this is Bob Ross Liquid Clear. It's in my little airtight container with the press still lid on it. Um, I want to make my canvas wet, but I scrub on a very thin amount of this Liquid Clear. Now, people ask me about this stuff. What is it? Is there a substitute? If I can reach it, yes, yeah, there it is. All this really is, is just a way of wetting my canvas, giving myself a nice oily surface upon which to paint. And the reason why is because I want to actually blend my colors on the canvas. It's a technique called wet on wet. And it's not new. It was something that was done centuries ago when artists used to use paints that were kind of dissimilar. In other words, they would uh, dry at different speeds. And what they found is that if they painted on a canvas which had some linseed oil on it or some turpentine, that they could use paints that were handmade and they would dry sort of roughly similar times and speeds. You see paintings, very old paintings, with lots of cracks and crazing through them. And that's usually because one layer of paint underneath has dried faster than the top layer. And to try and combat this, they used to sometimes wet their canvases. And of course, I'm painting on a black canvas here. So I, I wouldn't use the white version of it because, well, this would look just like a big foggy day. And I scrub on a very, very thin amount. And, and I'll put a link up there in the corner of the video here to a little video I made all about just using liquid clear. So you don't have to sort of worry how much to use and how too little to use. Just watch that little video and explain everything to you. But the secret sauce for this is don't use too much. Scrub it on real thin, really thin. And if you really struggle, you can always use something like refined linseed oil um, to do the same job. The only challenge with this is that it tends to dry a little faster. It sinks in a little quicker and you can get kind of like a patchy mottly effect. Maybe I'll find a painting which I, that little painting I did last a couple of weeks ago with a little, little nebula painting and I'll show you that at an angle. You can see what happened to that. It's easy to fix, you just give it a coat of varnish and, and you're good to go. Now the other thing I did on this canvas is to give it a coat of something called Christmas Brown, which is a combination of bright red and sap green. And you can see from the from the tape now, you can see it's got a nice sort of sepia brown colour on it. And this is something I, I just want to bring to your attention because I think more people get disappointed with this style of painting because they don't quite use enough. 
of this sort of semi-transparent or transparent colors and when you paint on top of it instead of getting a nice rich warm color or a nice strong blue or a strong green or a crimson color you kind of get a gray or a dull sort of mucky sort of color it's because you've just been a little bit sort of parsimonious a little bit careful with how much of the color you put on there and you've got to put on a lot put on more than you think you need if i touch my canvas you can see i got a really good strong brown color on there that's plenty you know um but if you don't put on enough then what happens is your painting tends to go sort of gray in color they don't really have that lovely vibrancy now the other thing to be careful of is lots of th th things to be careful of today is make sure you're using the right red because i, I screwed up um i snatched up a tube of red paint and mixed it with some sap green and i looked at my color and i thought that's not looking very healthy and i picked up some cad red light this is flower paint cad red light produces a sort of a, a muddy brown color and bright red produces a transparent or semi-transparent brown color so um i had to ditch the first lot of paint and remix it so make sure you're using a nice bright red not a cadmium color because they can go murky and some sap green and you make yourself up this sort of semi-transparent brown anyway no harm done let's get on with putting on some some detail here and i'm gonna i've got my old brush i scrubbed my colors on with and you've done a nice dry clean because i might want that later on there you go there's that brown color so let me just reset my camera because i'm going to be filming this area first okay so here's my palette and you can see there that color that i mixed up you see that it's a brown color but it's kind of a, the wrong brown i want this warm christmas brown color so that was the wrong red and that's the right red and sap green so i've switched down got myself a nice clean new fresh brush and i want to mix up a nice warm sort of golden color mainly white titanium white touch of indian yellow just a touch there we go yeah. bob's original version he had it had like the focal point in an overly but sort of top center here and i got a, a little bit more room so i'm going to just push mine off to, to one side there's going to be a waterfall through here so i kind of want a sort of a a side sort of angle through here so this is my kind of maybe my eye is going to be drawn this way here so i'm going to just kind of sit up just about there now this is that's about halfway so i'm, I'm well into that top half of my canvas here and i'm going to just hit this with a little crisscross now was how yellow it looked pretty yellow and you see up there it looks really white sometimes you have to just make a little adjustment yellow it up a little bit more see i make a decision in in, in within within a couple of strokes that i'm not sure sure i like a color rather than doing a whole bunch and then thinking nah, it doesn't quite work i'm gonna adjust my color a little more so get used to making quick uh, changes or rather that, you know, like deciding something, do it, do it sooner rather than later. So do a couple of strokes, stand back and, and that doesn't quite work for me. Rather than doing a whole bunch of painting and then deciding that you don't like it. Now that's going to be my brightest spot. So I'm going to work away from there, but I'm going to pick up brown. So what I don't want to do is be going back into this area. So stay in this area for a moment. So I'm going to try and quickly lose some of this color, this brightness. I'm going to kind of push it out there a little bit. It looks like, it's like a crazy woman, doesn't it? With a face and some, some mad hair. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of painting. I'm looking at things thinking, what am I painting? It looks a little crazy sometimes. I don't want a little bit of this sort of information coming in. I quite, I quite like this kind of not to be too solid, folks. So you'll, you'll often see me kind of just lightly flick at my paintings. And I might just kind of pull that color over a little bit further. Just kind of pull it out a little bit more. Could I develop a nice light beam? I bet I could. Yeah, 
see you make decisions as you go you see things and you think oh, i could do something with that that's when i'm painting away i'm sort of i'm just kind of looking at all the options i've got what could i do what could i create swung the camera around a little bit to the side there so you can sort of film or the film this over my shoulder a little more and I had to tidy up on my palette. I took some of the white and Indian yellow, moved it over to the side in next to my Christmas brown colour. And I got my old brush back that I, I put the paint on with. And I want to do sort of a, a sort of a slightly softer background colour. So I want these to look like they're further away. So a little of that Christmas brown, a little bit of that white with Indian yellow in it. And I'm going to get you to really sort of see this up close because I know people f really struggle with this technique. It's where I push my brush into the the paint and I create a little line in the paint. And what this does is it also creates a little line on the edge of the brush. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if this is the right color, but I'm thinking about branches leaning in from the side. So if you imagine my brush being parallel to the canvas and tipping slightly, Let's have a little tap. Does that show up? Too pale. Push it a little more to the brown side now. I'm favoring that left corner a little more. Pressing it into the paint. Forcing the bristles open here, really pushing that brush forwards. And then that's the corner I'm going to be painting with. The other corner just lifts off. And I'm just going to touch and create indication of a little branch now think about painting one little branch at a time I've done I've done three little stripies there which okay maybe not so bad but if I carry on doing those little stripy jobs they're going to get really annoying because it's going to look like sort of just lines of typing so when you do this got to think about joining them up so there's one little branch I'm thinking about how to put another branch in here because I'm going to have another tree layer coming in here. So I'm thinking about placement all the time. See how I tip the brush on its side. Now it looks like I'm tapping like that. But the brush is actually at a funny sort of angle. If I lay, I can't have it laid too flat because it won't work. So we're going to tip it so that it's on that corner and you just press with a corner. I made a bit of a blob there. See, I went on the same spot just too many times and it made a kind of smudge. It's okay. I'll fix that. I'll do a couple of little taps over it, but I can't go over it again. It'll smudge. The breast branch you paint is the one you only paint once. If you try and paint it twice or three times, that's when, as Bob would say, you get into a world of pain. It just doesn't seem to look quite nice. I often find I paint these branches nicer than I do those ones. From where I stand to the left of the, of the easel, I can't see what that corner is doing very well. My eyes just aren't, I can't see it. So it's more of a kind of a surprise when I, when I hit the canvas. And that's kind of fun because then, as I often say, paint like you don't care. Well, from here, I can't care because I can't see what I'm doing. So often this comes out looking kind of natural looking. The ones on the other side, I can see everything. I can see the whole brush and they get too fiddly. I get a kind of nitpicking. I've got a few little branches back in there. I should have put these in maybe first. Yeah, I should have added these first and I got out of order. I, I jumped, a sequence, jumped out of sequence there. It's okay, I'll catch it now. It happens. You're kind of excited and you get to do something. It doesn't matter. You just have some fun with it. But you see, sometimes you make mistakes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as you spot the mistake and you can go back and correct it. And to push those back, I need to maybe have a branch come out over the top. Yeah, there you go. So they all moved way back and these ones came forward. So as you start it feeling not working for you, just take a paper towel, wipe it off, 
Pick it up. Don't put it in thinners. Up just. Get it back in shape. Get it back into a nice shape again. So we're going to thin this down. I'm using a Bob Ross liner brush. I'm going to just roll it through this paint. I will see thin like ink. Don't get it too watery. I'm going to hold my brush well back. And you know you've seen me do this before. Just let the brush just kind of bounce. And just kind of head up through. It's a stop start tree. It kind of starts and stops and starts and stops. Think about how you want your trees to look in the distance. I might put in some more bushes down here. Look at that. I've made, I turned two into three then. I look like three people dancing now. I see these images in my head. I'll change it. I'll change that. I'll change that in a minute. Well, I've stood back and, and I, I'm not in love with these branches here. They're not really, not really doing it for me. So I've got that little brush. I put the bright color in the sky. Um, it's going to lose them a little, and I want a I want a stronger, darker colour. And again, I'm using my old brush for this. These trees are much closer. So this is sort of the third tone. Yeah, there we go. So we've got light ones, mid tones, now darks. Now something I'm very careful of when I'm painting. Especially when I'm doing kind of these two sort of opposing each other, it's symmetry. You do something that sticks out here, and then you do something that sticks out here, and they look symmetrical, and they kind of look like they're facing each other. And this painting has a little bit of a reputation when it's painted as an oval, because the shape of it, they tend to end up looking like someone's, like a rib cage, like an x ray of someone's chest. Um, painting as a square is a little less a problem. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just adding a few branches in here and then I'll come back in a second we'll drop in the waterfall. Time for a short field trip. A little nature garden just going golden brown, all the lovely long grasses, it's turning to seed, and I look up, my lovely maple tree, I planted that just about 20 years ago now, you can see first touches, golden brown, you tell me, the autumn is just around the corner. Van Dyke Brown through these bigger branches here. You see I put in a bunch of them here and I put in some little ones in the way in the background here. And this, this adds depth and distance to my painting. That misty murky area in the background, I can't tell what it is but then again it could be a tree, it could be almost anything back in there. There's little rays of light coming through there, maybe illuminating a bank back there and this little bright area here in the background. And all these branches just add ton of detail on top. Just a few moments I'm going to be asked to do something else. So I'm going to stop painting because I have an important appointment. There's my alarm. That's right, I have to host a premiere. And that's the premiere you're watching on Sunday the 25th. So I'm back from that premiere. I'd just like to say a big thank you. It's so wonderful to be able to communicate and and have you watch with me as you see one of my tutorials go out on YouTube is wonderful. And I really appreciate your time. But now I think I have to get back to my waterfall painting. So let's get those brushes out again and carry on. Well, we can't put it off. We have to paint the waterfall. And I've got some of this liquid clear back out. And look at this. I've broken out a brand new fan brush. My last fan brush is, well, they're just getting a bit disgraceful now. So I'm going to try my luck with a brand new fan brush and I'm going to go into some of this titanium white a little bit. 
But what I'm doing here is I want to turn my paint into a nice glossy, bright color. But not white, not white. Trust me, when you see this against that background there, it looks white, it looks so brilliant. And that of course is yellow. So we have to, we have to sort of temper our colors a little bit. Thing to remember is to, we want to know where it's going to start and where it's going to stop. And if you're ever unsure about the stopping point, then put a little mark on. So from there downwards will be water. I'm going to go for where it is. I've got, I'm holding in the handle further back for you. And what we're doing is doing like a little half of a letter T is going to go across. We're going to drop and we're going to use gravity. We're going to just let my arm fall. So I'm going to try and get my shoulder, my hand and everything in line. My shoulder's just, just on the edge of the shot here. And the idea is you're going to let gravity do the work. If you try and guide it down, you'll, you'll wiggle, guaranteed. Okay, here we go. Firm pressure, really push and You want to make sure this is nice and level. And if you make it a little wider than you need it, it doesn't matter. We can put rocks to the side and we can squeeze it back in a little bit and knock off a little bit of paint. It's a little bright at the top there. So I just dry clean my brush a little bit. Notice as I come down towards my, my lifting off point, my hand naturally falls away. The, the stroke is doing that. So as I'm coming down, my hand is coming away from the canvas and it makes painting waterfalls a little easier. So I think I'm going to stop there. I'm going to put in the rocks at the sides. And I think what I might try and do is pull up a little bit of a reflection. And of course it's cause it's reversed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, have to pull up from the base of the canvas. A little bit of color so just a suggestion there. okay and one other little feature i like to get in and terry does this in her paintings she said there should be little sort of sprites and these are little little bits of information there's the water falls through the air it breaks up and it kind of falls through the air in little pieces like like tears and if you just tap with the edge of the brush especially towards the base of the waterfall. You can just create these little broken bits of water. As that is, they fall through the air, they kind of break apart. And again, just a few touches here. There we go. Remember, this is quite shadowy down in here, so I must make sure, of course, my, my waterfall is upright because water tends not to fall at an angle here. So. And that's about as upright as I can get it and still have you in the shot. I think in here, I'm just gonna add a suggestion of a little bit of splash and crash. And again, just with the corner of the fan brush, give a little push. So there you go. I I've got a clean, dry brush. My other brushes I washed so that they didn't get in a pickle whilst the premiere was on. I'm just going to go, I'm going to just grab part of that, just a little bit of it. And pull it down. And I'm going to have some nice rocks overhanging this. So I think that's pretty much it for this stage of my painting. There we are. So reflections and a nice waterfall. Soften that up a little bit. There we go. I think we got quite a nice waterfall in there. And as I say, you want to be quite decisive with your brush strokes. If you stop and think about it too much, you'll end up wiggling them and kind of going offline. So you've got to get in and drop them in. Let's get into a pickle on purpose. Here you see, I'm going to do a two or three sort of classic sort of not very good for waterfalls. This is what I call the death grip waterfall. It's when you hold the brush so tightly, you fail to lift off at the nice point to get that lovely tapered finish. You sort of press into the canvas too hard. This is what I call the nervous swipe waterfall. When you literally swish at the canvas and lift off with a funny little drag at the end, 
and of course this one over control and you end up making well looks like a river but actually fact they're slightly easier to work with you put some rocks around them I just scraped off the paint I got my old brush back and what I'm doing now is I'm just adding a little texture to my canvas so I got some of that Van Dyke brown and the Christmas brown color that we use for these bushes and I scraped off that surplus paint by my waterfalls and what I'm doing here is I'm just texturing the surface I think I need some way of holding my waterfall in because right now I need something that's going to be a little higher than the waterfall just to hold the sides in a little roll of paint about as big as a fat match stick and now remember you're going to come in above the waterfall if you go in below the waterfall Mother Nature won't, won't like that very much so I'm going to just kind of come in across the top and I'm going to kind of scoop around so there we go now you can't see that terribly well maybe you just see a, the sort of suggestion of the edge of a rock scrape that down I want to put a little bit more shape inside here and I use a little bit more of that dark brown mixture here Maybe this waterfall sits sits a little further back. Maybe I need a little something on this side as well. Maybe a little rock to hold this side in. Again, important that we go higher than the waterfall. And all I'm doing here is I'm, again I'm just putting on I'm putting on some paint with a little texture to it. Actually, in fact, this being a little bit lighter brown color under here now that she actually turned out to be a good thing because now you can sort of see where I'm actually allowing the paint to sort of break sort of like a sense of balance how many rocks the sizes of them maybe one more in here yeah I think that's you can get a little a little carried away with these rocks and things but let's even bring let's go a little crazy let's let's as Bob would say let's 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 go crazy Let's have that rock kind of coming over there. And, and I don't want it going up at the sides, I want it coming down at the sides. So that my, my eye is taken to the back, directing people's attention. Okay, so there you go. Theatre management. <laughs> Let's put some highlights on here. Let's find a little space for that. Over there out the way. And I want... Maybe a touch of white. Got a little yellow mixed in with. That's absolutely fine. Maybe a little bit of ochre. A little bit of our Christmas brown colour here. Now, you've seen me do marble mixes before. And, and I keep it as loose as I can. Because I know that if I move this around one more time. And then pick it up. And then put it onto my canvas. It's been overly mixed at least twice. So if I look, leave it looking like that. And then pick up little roll of color so that's sort of semi mixing it a second or third time or well, second time now light touch here folks and I'm going to just drag this across the top here I want this to be catching a little light and just drag it across give it a little wiggle yeah I want it to look like a little sort of pathway there come back and do a little fix What's that poppy cat? I've got, I got poppy cat down at my feet here, complaining about something. What's up, sweetie? Hey, what's up? She wants to know what's in the cupboard. Nothing in the cupboard, sweetie. Yeah, there's plenty of rocks down here. And I'm just dipping in. I'm just literally stabbing into my paint, picking up little rolls of colour where I want. If I, if I overdo it, I can always put some more back. Oh, a little more ochre in this one here. This side might be slightly more in the shadows. Now, right now, these don't look like anything, do they? They're kind of just sort of smudges and blobs and things floating around on my canvas. And it can be... Or rather, you can be forgiven for getting a little twitchy about them not looking particularly like anything. And 
the only thing I can tell you is not to get too judgmental too quickly with your work. Don't start critiquing your work too soon because until you get something else on the canvas sometimes you kind of can't see where you're going with your painting. It sometimes needs a little more context. This little edge. So there's a little tree sitting on his own. Now, if you find doing small features like this a little tricky using a using a one-inch brush, you can substitute for for a filbert brush. I grabbed a filbert. Let's do it. Let's do it. Christmas brown. Heck, maybe I need to be doing this a bit more. That's easier, isn't it? Why was I struggling? <laughs> you pick a brush which works for you. No matter what I say or what anybody else says, okay? If you find a brush that works for you, that does the job, then that's the right brush to use every time. Every time. Covered up all my nice little sticky twigs and things back in there, but we don't care. But what I do want to do is to try and add some, some foliage over this area here. And again, hey, you pick the brush that works great for you. I'm going to use this one now. I want a bigger brush, something a little more sizable. And again, I'm just texturing this. I want to lose this straight edge back here a little more. Okay. So I had a little tidy up on my palette. I moved my chocolatey brown color over out the way. And I brought my orange, some yellow ochre, and some cad yellow into play here. And I've got myself a clean, dry, fresh one inch brush. And this is quite a newish one. And it needs to be a little bit sort of more springy and a bit new than the other one. The other one's pretty worn out, but um, you want a fresh brush for this because you don't really want the other brush. It's covered in lots of paint. See, I kind of pull these together into a, like a little curtain of color and I pull them down. Now, emphasize this one more time. I'm going to chunk of something in my paint. Get rid of that. You see the little Bob Ross logo on my brush? I hold that so I can see it in the palm of my hand or in the crook of my, my thumb. Because what I do is I pull down with this side of the brush, which loads it with, with color. The back stays clean and then I push back. And I load my brush the same way every time. I'm going to favor this left corner a little more. Okay. By doing that, it means I've loaded that corner and the back of the brush. If I forget and then start loading the other side of the brush, the brush mats together. It starts to become sticky almost instantly. It stops working. I think people forget and they just flip their brush over. So I always want to see Bob smiling at me just there. So I know I'm, I'm about right. But again, going to be a shadow through here, so I'm going to use just the corner of my one inch brush. Whew, that looks bright, doesn't it? Think about how the light would form on the tops of several bushes in here. There's not just one giant bush at depth and distance. So you see there's two little bushes that are highlighted too. Get a little more ochre. Something a little more shadowy. Because not quite so bright. Again, you can now see three distinct areas of highlight there. And as I'm running out of colour, I'll do the little bits going off the edge. All little shapes. Now, you see, I went over that one a couple of times. Let's make a mistake. Let's, let's goof this one up. Let's say I went over this three or four times. And I managed to make myself a big, big oak of cotton ball. And it happens occasionally. Oh, look. Zip it off. Zip it off. Pat knife. Don't keep adding paint. Adding paint doesn't get you anywhere. Zip it off. Redarken. Retexture. That's it. Redarken. Retexture. Bob's smiling face, he's laughing, and re-highlight. 
and don't fall with it again. Simple as that. It's just being a little confident with what you're doing sometimes. You just have to think sometimes and think, well, I'm, I'm just going back over that same spot twice or three times. So I'm on that right corner. I'm going to tap. Watch this. As I come over the top, I'm going to start angling my brush out. I'm going to slide it round and tap come down so it kind of kind of like creates a little almost like a like a little vine or a creeper something growing down the face of my little waterfall i might spin my camera around bring it around a little more so you can see this a little easier just that corner and let it kind of come down it's not an easy angle to paint out to try and show you everything hey beast maybe i could do one coming in this way Again, to be brushed slightly, slightly over. Now I can't see that. I can't see what I'm doing here. Okay, right over the edge of the waterfall. I think you get the idea. It's kind of crazy. Can't kind of get these nice little patterns. Yeah. See, I picked up a little more cad. Yeah. Notice still the back of my brush clean. All the colors on one corner, one side. Okay. Yeah, I got a little yellow one in there. A little couple of little short ones. Pick up a little paint. <laughs> the, the, the label's worn off this. You can't see anyone's face anymore, but see, slide it forward, slide it forward. Yeah, Pick up a little roller paint right on the edge of the brush like a miniature version of the one inch brush and you can tap with just the corner now you're not going to get far that's the only drawback you're going to have to load your brush repeatedly to do this because you just haven't got the same carrying capacity you don't have the same amount of bristles you can do some neat delicate little touches here if you're finding that one inch brush just a little cumbersome a little tricky to get into a little gap if you want to highlight that little tree there you might like to use a little silver brush to put a little orange on it and again just tap just kind of have some fun but see it runs out of paint real quick. So I reposition my camera and I've just done some of these background footage, exactly the same technique, but just using a little more uh, brown and ochre together and just putting in some of these, uh, what I call sort of filler foliage, exactly the same technique, but with foliage, which is a lot darker, it doesn't have that brightness to it. And a couple of these rocks down here were starting to look a little bit too bold. So I put a little bit of brown over them in fact, these, these three rocks here don't look kind of fun, do they? Yeah, let's zip them off. Maybe I just want one rock. Just one good sized rock. Super light touch. One rock. A little highlight. Maybe that's it. I'll fool with this a little more, but basically, you can change your mind. You can take things out, add things back in as often as you'd like. I deliberately let some of my highlighting drift over the edge of the waterline there, and I've, I've got an old one inch brush here, clean old one inch brush. All my other brushes are pretty, pretty dirty right now. And I'm just going to go back over, grab a little of that shadow color and a little bit of the color pull that down so turn those into reflections and that bit there as well a little of that and turn that into a reflection too yeah there we go that's some grabbed a little of the rock and pulled that down be careful with highlights it into smudge Anything but pure white colour, sorry, anything but pure white. 
going to be too bright for this. I'm just going to drop in. Just to store a water line here. Not easy to do, but try and keep yourself a little bit on the level. There we go. Rump those in. You can hear that. It sounds like the kettle's on. I think a cup of tea is due any second. There. Okay, so it's time to start to bring this painting to a close. I need to do some highlighting on here and maybe a touch of highlighting over on here, but I'm going to keep these out edges pretty dark. I don't really want to take the, my eye away from the central area of the waterfall, maybe. So I'm, I'm going to I'm dry cleaning my one inch brush, my highlighting brush. It's done quite a bit of work and as a general rule, I don't tend to wash my brushes when I'm painting with them because once they get thinners on them, then I dare not go back onto my painting. It'll, it'll ruin everything, it'll lift everything off. This is looking particularly oily. You see, because I've been doing highlighting only with this brush, it's just absolutely full of paint. Absolutely full. But if I dry clean it a few times, I might get it back. And I think I'm going to chance it. It's very oily, so it's sometimes hard to get a little line in the paint. Just get a little bit of line in the paint there. So I catch this little bush. Maybe I'll put a little orange. Just a little touch of orange as well. I think the yellow, yellow orange, what do you fancy? I think I quite like the, the orange a little more than I like the yellow. There wasn't a great deal of yellow there to worry about, so I kind of just... Yeah, kind of... I think that looks nice, so... Just the faintest touch of orange back in here as well. Might leave some of these dark. But everything needs a highlight. I like that. It's a nice colour. Shame it's here though. It's too bright. <laughs> it's too bright. Simple, quick little fixes. Um, small things you can just do quickly. Just to sort of change the look of your painting. But... I think I'm pretty pleased with this now. I think I might be just going to put a few little sticks and twigs there and then do the big reveal. So there we have it. A Bob Ross classic, Enchanted Falls, with a little twist from yours truly. But don't move, there's some more lovely videos for you to watch coming right along. Happy painting, people!